Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay if I uh, project my voice? If you can't hear me, don't raise your hand. Uh, my name is Matt Thompson, and uh, you are in Lights, Camera, Action at a Distance. Two and a half ideas for family programming with the doors closed. Get a little timer going here so that I know that I'm on schedule. And uh, thanks to San Jose State University, thanks to Library 2.0, and um, thanks to all y'all for uh, being here with me today. Um, I, my name is Matt, and I am Community Engagement Librarian at uh, Suffolk Public Library in Suffolk, Virginia. Uh, we are located in southeastern Virginia in the Hampton Roads community, uh, which includes um, our much larger cities, Norfolk and Virginia Beach. And on this uh, title slide, you'll see a tiny URL, which will point you towards supplemental material that goes into uh, full detail about the program that I'm going to be describing to you today. So um, what we did essentially is uh, we created an online escape room. And if you follow the tiny URL, it leads you to a uh, Google Sheet, which takes you through step by step what the players were doing, where they were in the story, which uh, online platform they were using and any of the uh, links that um, might be relevant to that stage. I'll just give you uh, one more second in case you want to uh, copy down that tiny URL. I also put it so, in the chat. Uh, heading into the spring of 2020, uh, I was looking forward that we host at uh, our North Suffolk branch. This was a highly successful community program that fit into um, a model which our library had had a lot of success with, the big event uh, type program where a lot of people would come to the branch all at once and do a thing together. So, um, and from uh, 18 to 19, the, the program was getting bigger and bigger and we had a lot of ambitions for how we, can, uh, how we were gonna grow it. And uh, being that this, uh, these videos here are from the summer of 2019, um, Old Town Road, was was really huge. Um, my, if I play this, see if you can hear the sound. Uh, and I'll ask my uh, volunteer room in the room. Did, did you hear the sound? I think one of the participants is a volunteer here. No, I did not hear the sound. Oh, okay. All right. I think I have to do um, stop share and then go back to share and do advanced sharing option. Um, I saw the video movement, but I didn't hear the sound. All right, here it goes. It goes advanced and then share sound. And now we'll share. Next out of this. Okay. That should get it right. Yeah, we got yeah. it. Yeah. So that's a really good day at work, uh, being a uh, DJ at an all ages dance party. Uh, yes, I do own my own fog machine. Um, 
So all of this went out the door with the pandemic. Uh, we began to design a virtual block party to substitute for the dance. Uh, we, we envisioned using Zoom breakout rooms to feature different activities. There would be one for music and there'd be a cooking demo in another and party games in a third. And in fact, we did do this and hosted it for staff and it was a big dud. And um, we decided we needed to head in a different direction than um, hosting a virtual party. So the dance team reconvened and started to brainstorm. And uh, to frame our brainstorming, I asked my team to think about what happens when you have a good party. You go to a party and you're having a nice time, like what is that set of qualities that makes it a good party? And then what sort of values animate being a good party host? We could still have fun together. We could still have this celebration that brought the community together, but we're gonna have to think outside the box. Um, the library, had, uh, they, they came back to me with their ideas. Um, the library had already had some success uh, with a murder mystery, uh, once as a kind of dinner theater and uh, a second time as a series of short videos. And uh, we had also run two successful escape rooms that were set in our bookmobile. Could we do something similar along the lines of a murder mystery escape room that was virtual? Uh, so with my uh, team's brainstorms in hand, uh, I began to pull together different sources of inspiration. So uh, in October of 19, uh, I helped to uh, transform our smallest branch into a haunted house. And haunted houses have long fascinated me as uh, a kind of interactive theater. So whereas in, in conventional theater, the audience uh, is passive, they're consuming the entertainment. In the haunted house, the, 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 the audience is interacting with the set and the characters who are like out to get you. Um, so you're at least partially creating the performance as you're um, consuming it. Uh, I was also inspired by um, alternative reality games uh, such as Cicada 3301, uh, which uh, was introduced on 4chan in uh, 2012. And uh, people still disagree uh, what the ultimate motives of the Cicada group were, but what I saw uh, was a lot of overlap with um, many of the professional concerns that drive um, libraries. Uh, that's freedom of information, uh, rejection of censorship, and online privacy. And finally, there were uh, my memories of the 1985 PC game, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, which shipped with a paper copy of the World Almanac. Um, this was huge to uh, nine-year-old Matt. Uh, players had to collect clues to identify the thief from a list of potential suspects and use an authoritative reference source to follow them to different geographic locations all within a time limit. So pulling together my various sources of inspiration, I knew that I wanted uh, audience interaction where people were helping to create the story as they played the game. Uh, there would be a variety of activities and puzzles that would play out over different online platforms and participants would not be able to just sit back and watch the show. They would have to um, figure out where on the internet they would have to go next. That would be like part of the game. Um, there was gonna be multiple mysteries at once. There was the whodunit aspect. And then like, where, is, where did the crook run off to? Um, and what I was aiming for is what communication scholar uh, Henry Jenkins calls transmedia storytelling. That's a process where integral elements of a fiction get dispersed systematically across multiple delivery channels. So from our uh, past experiences running mystery games, uh, and we knew the puzzles couldn't be too hard uh, or else or take too long, uh, people would get frustrated, um, they could just quit or maybe wind up uh, eating up too much staff time. So I started playing around with different kinds of flow charts. Uh, ultimately, I settled on Google Sheets as a way to keep track of all the different moving parts of the game. There were the different storylines, uh, the different pages in the uh, workbook that accompanied it, 
the, the platforms that uh, participants were on, what kind of puzzle or challenge they had to accomplish, um, how they were being rewarded or getting their progress marked as the game progressed, and then also uh, scheduling staff and the technology needed for different stages of the game. So just to kind of like run it down for you, uh, what was in the game, uh, players uh, register and receive an email with a specific time and date when the game is going to begin. And then uh, download a PDF that had background information on the criminal suspects. At the designated time and date, they receive another email with a link to a YouTube video that has one of our librarians uh, in a, a trench coat and a floppy hat, and she orients them to the mystery at hand. Um, and then in the description to the YouTube video is a link to a Google form where players uh, solve puzzles to retrace the last steps of these um, missing library staff members. At the end of the Google form, it links back to another YouTube video that has Detective Deborah uh, interviewing eyewitnesses to the crime. And then the, the participants have to uh, extract the clues out of the video and compare it to what was in the PDF that they downloaded. And then there's also in the Google form info to connect to a Zoom meeting. And then when the players arrive in the Zoom meeting, they move between breakout rooms playing charades and Pictionary with the, the characters that are in the story. After they complete the, the Zoom challenge, they receive an email address. They have to reach out to the email address. And then in response, they receive rhyming clues. Uh, and then they, ha they have to decipher the rhyming clues that lead to uh, an encyclopedia article, library database, and then read the article, add up the historical dates in it in a math problem, and then send the email the sum back. They receive a phone number, make a phone call. Detective Deborah answers in character, and then uh, they say who they think the suspect is. She sends them a link to YouTube video that resolves the whole story. So I'm going to show share with you now. Uh, let me stop this PowerPoint and I'm going to share with you some of the uh, YouTube videos that we produced. Share screen. It's going to be Chrome. And I still have sound check. Okay. So um, here is Detective Deborah. You'll want to get right to work, so I'll be brief. Simply put, we have a serious crime on our hands and need all the help that we can get. The case is in a work in progress and the details are kind of sketchy, but I'll paint you a picture of where we are at the moment. This morning, in a brazen art heist, someone stole the library to go, which was loaded with priceless entries into the Suffolk Public Library's Iconicon art contest. Unbeknownst to the would-be thief, two library staff members were at the back of the bookmobile, making this a kidnapping, too. I tried to warn the library about their off-brand security cameras, but they were like... It ain't for room, don't fix it. Now. We'll need to race against the clock to find the library to go, save the art on board, and rescue our friends. Our prime suspects are the Dismal Click, a gang of notorious fan art thieves. This group of scam artists always takes things too far. They just don't know where to draw the line. <laughs> Refer to the suspect profiles in your detective kit, collect clues about the identity of the thief, and report back to me. We have one clue to start with. It's a scrap of paper with the code word Pepsi with peanuts on it. To begin, follow the link in the description below. And work quickly. Time is of the essence. When we catch these crooks, they'll learn that more Monet means mo problems. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, Suffolk is home to Planner's Peanuts, so we are contractually obligated to work in peanut references in all of our programming. Um, I benefited from having a, a great team, and I want to highlight the contributions of uh, Jennifer Forbes, uh, who did the graphic design on the detective kit, and Ashley Reed, 
who wrote many of the puzzles and tied it all into the uh, Iconicon fan art contest. And here you see uh, Jennifer and Ashley as the roller skating unicorn. That's me. Of course, I'm the villain. <laughs> okay. Whoa! Ulysses, did you hear that? What's happening? Oh, 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 oh. Where are we going? Isn't it wonderful to work with such uh, talented uh, colleagues. Um, uh, also in my corner was Angie Sumner, who gave me feedback on the script and the shot list. Uh, she put in a lot of the jokes, um, the good ones mostly, and uh, also asked a lot of really great questions that helped uh, the narrative make sense. And uh, if that wasn't enough, uh, she did all the shooting and editing, essentially my stage manager for all of the video segments. Um, here she is as witness, number one. Oh. Come to think of it. Nope, nothing out of the ordinary, except I guess there must be a car show in town because I saw a real sweet classic Chevy cruising around the neighborhood. Thank you, Angie. Okay, I'm going to stop that share and then go back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay, so um, I feel like we started with uh, just ridiculously high expectations. Um, we really had to cut back on the number of puzzles and layers to the story. Uh, you have to expect players are going to be dropping in and out. Life is happening. Their kids are crying. And, you know, now the, the laundry needs to go from the washer to the dryer. Um, so uh, you, you have to um, consider uh, your participants' um, life entertainment balance and also staff time not limitless i mean it was the summer of 2020 um we had some time on our hands um we did hold a uh rehearsal uh where we played the game for staff and um, that resulted in a lot of last minute rewrites you don't want your players hung up on a puzzle or uh, delayed in reaching the next stage of the game uh, day of we did um, two performances, a 1 p.m. and a 6 p.m. We got a total of uh, 26 participants, which is pretty modest, uh, considering how much work went into it. Um, it was a really cool thing to be a part of, uh, but Suffolk Library, uh, we did not return to this model of the, the big event, but online uh, style program in the future. Uh, the audience that did come, uh, they loved us. Uh, perhaps we benefited from low expectations as this was the early days of Zoom programming. Um, a lot of people were surprised by the, the Zoom portion of the program. Uh, when we asked people to turn on their cameras, uh, one player had to leave the game because they were playing while driving their car. And uh, another was reluctant to turn on their camera. And when we finally got them to do it, it was three women in bed. Uh, of course, uh, one of the downsides of uh, online programming is addressing barriers to access. We knew that um, next time we wanted to do a thing, we were going to do it offline. And um, where players could go at their own pace and where uh, staff wasn't going to run themselves ragged. So in October of 2020, we got a call from Suffolk Tourism. They needed a last minute program for Halloween. Uh, they were partnering with the local tea house on an Edgar Allan Poe themed event. And so uh, I got back together with my puzzle writer, Ashley Reed, 
and we started dreaming up a Scooby-Doo mystery set in the, the city's uh, historic cemetery. Uh, this time, the narrative model switched from escape room to scavenger hunt. Uh, we walked around the cemetery, we noted interesting headstones, one was shaped like a tree trunk, uh, one was twins and they had died days apart, another one the person had passed on Christmas Day. And um, this became Loose Leaves Sink Thieves. And uh, being, it went with the tea house, loose leaf heap. Uh, the, the different headstones became landmarks in a choose your own adventure story. And the players recorded facts on answer slips that they used as raffle tickets for prizes that uh, tourism bought with their budget. Um, I was going to read this flattering Instagram post, but um, I'm running short on time. Uh, this uh, Loose Leaves was a huge success, and uh, that inspired a spinoff, Fine Art Filch. And uh, this had the same scavenger hunt premise as Loose Leaves, but uh, we expanded the community partnership aspect to include 12 local small businesses in his Suffolk's historic downtown. As players made their way through the Choose Your Own Adventure narrative, they completed a walking tour of downtown and some businesses told me that people did come into their stores and see what they had to offer. Also the library, we followed up with our partners with uh, thank you cards and token gifts. Uh, supporting small local business has become a priority for us. It does add uh, extra work to program development, but it expands the audience and uh, connects and builds relationships between the library and community organizations. So uh, in conclusion, I promised you two and a half ideas. Uh, here they are. Uh, first is the escape room, which is essentially a series of small puzzles that are all strung together in a big puzzle that's some kind of narrative. Uh, the escape room is a staffed event and it gives you the possibility of some kind of virtual interaction with patrons. Second is the scavenger hunt. You're outside uh, in a walkable area, there are features and you use those features as game pieces. The players interact with the game pieces, which means you can run it without staff if you want to. And then the variation on the theme is uh, community partnership. And this can bring new resources to the table, grow your audience and build relationships between the library and uh, other organizations. Thanks very much for having me. Um, here's my contact info. Uh, please uh, be in touch. Let me click on the, the chat here. Scavenger hunts are fun. Uh, scavenger hunts with community partners. Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks everybody for the nice uh, uh, compliments. Um, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to stop my share. And uh, if anybody um, would like to ask a question, um, please feel free. I looks like we have uh, seven minutes by my clock. Or do you want more bad art puns? Oh, oh, okay, okay. We'll we'll do we'll do the the conclusion, the thrilling conclusion. I gotta go back to Zoom, share screen, Chrome, sound is on, share. Okay, let's catch the bad guy. Time to put the finishing touches on this bus. That's the best line I've ever written. Put the finishing touches on this bus. <laughs>
pants are great. I wish I still had those pants. There's a question about, can you share some examples of scavenger hunt clues? Oh. No. He had a brush with the law. One more pun. I was framed. I was framed. Okay. All right. There was a question. Is it in chat? Yeah. Can you uh, share? How many staffers minimum do you think it takes to produce something like this? Oh, good gravy. Um, uh, well, there. So, um, first of all, uh, shout out to um, our system and our bosses for letting us do um, what we want. Um, how cool is it to work? for an organization where you can express yourself creatively and um, do it on the clock. Uh, let's see, there was um, me, uh, Jennifer Forbes, Ashley, Sum uh, Ashley Reed, uh, Angie Sumner, and uh, we, we were the four um, creatives um, that, that put the thing together. And then we had uh, Deborah, was, had, had more speaking lines than any of the other characters. And then uh, another two um, that helped us uh, run the Zoom rooms and, and um, assisted day of. So we did it with seven and um, it was tough. And we did a lot of stuff at the last minute. <laughs> and um, it was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Angie, are you here? Did you make it? I, um, Angie was uh, our, our marketing person and um, a, a great resource for our library. And uh, short, uh, shortly after uh, Bookmobile Bandit, um, she moved on to uh, NASA, if you can believe that. And uh, I was hoping she could make it today, but she has a little baby and it's, it's nap time here uh, on the East Coast. Well, cool. Um, uh, thanks for thanks for coming to my thing. And uh, what helps to simplify and and execute the scavenger hunt? What are some examples of scavenger hunt clues? Okay, so um, in, in the in the graveyard there was um, there was a Confederate general, and he had uh, cannonballs on his grave. How many cannonballs are on? Blah blah blah. Uh, there was another one. Uh, real kooky stuff, like uh, the exact number of years, months, and days a man had lived. Uh, the number, I told there, some of these uh, woodsmen of the world um, tombstones, you know, had how many logs are on the tombstone? And Oh, <laughs> Ashley's over here. It's like, how many wives did this guy have? You know, you like a man and the, like his first wife and then his second wife and then his third wife. And, um, but uh, the idea is, is that you want to like cut back on um, the, the, you don't want to have to like leave stuff in uh, a sacred place like a cemetery um, and, and then uh, perhaps have that exposed to the elements. Um, so so you're, you're directing people to look at the, the headstones and gather information about it. Now with the fine art filch, what we did was um, we had copies of um, works of art that we had uh, defaced in different ways. And then uh, we laminated them to protect them from the elements and um, hung them in the, the windows of our business partners. So uh, at, uh, people go to the, the business partners and then they have um, this thing that they can interact with. We had them trace uh, the different um, graffiti that had been left on the, the artworks and then that connected to a code and then they could decode it to have the message that was the criminal who committed the crimes. Um, 
but just in terms of simplifying and, ex uh, and execution, um, lots of planning, lots of planning in advance um, uh, because you have uh, your story, uh, your partners and your game pieces. And uh, you want to make sure that, and, and, and to run through it uh, and rehearsal. Uh, rehearse, rehearsing is always a good idea as well. Well, folks, uh, that's the end of my 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to stop record and thanks for coming. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, be in touch. Bye-bye.